Good morning, Northern Hills family. Welcome to today's service. Whether that's right here in person at one of our campuses or online watching via Facebook or YouTube, we really appreciate you being here with us. For those of you in person, please fill out one of the cards at the end of your row, or for those watching virtually, click on the link in the chat posted by one of our online greeters. If you're new to Northern Hills, thank you so much for choosing to worship with us. We know that there are a ton of options for you these days, and we appreciate you being here. Here are some of the things you can expect. In a few moments, we'll start our service with singing, a quick message for the children joining us today, followed by a message from one of our pastors. Here are a couple of quick announcements that we want to make sure you're aware of before we begin. Our revamped Wednesday night service is called Wednesday Night Life. We're creating a new way for all of our congregation, whether in person here in our sanctuary or online, to actively engage with our service. Like wow, but different. It takes place every Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary or online. Our Easter services are happening this week, starting off with Maundy Thursday, then Good Friday, and finally Easter Sunday. These services will be streamed and the times are listed below. Easter Sunday morning, April 17th, the Ministry Center will host a sunrise service at 7 a.m. at the L.C. Rutledge Apartment Complex. Reach out to them if you'd like to help out. Here at our 1604 campus, we'll also host a sunrise service at 7 a.m. out on the roundabout. This service will also be live streamed. We are still accepting VBS and summer camp registrations on our website at the link below. Sign your child up so they don't get into a summer slump. Have you heard of our action classes? Well, if you're new to Northern Hills or are simply interested in attending, the next one is always right around the corner. The date is listed below. You can also email Susan Bartlett for more information on how to participate. These are just a few of the things you can expect to see in the near future here at Northern Hills. Don't forget to follow us on all of our socials, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find out more information about these and other events, as well as volunteering for various ministries by visiting our website at nhumc.org. Now, if you will, please stand to your feet as we center ourselves for worship and focus on the Word of God as it is sung, spoken, and preached. Let's praise the Lord together.
United Methodist Church. Welcome to this church. I am so glad that you are here and that you have decided to start this wonderful Holy Week with all of us. Now, before you're sitting now, we're going to greet each other because it happens that we haven't seen some of us in a long time or you have seen them, but you call them the person sitting in the nice chair or the person with the nice hair. So now I'm going to invite you to do this. You're going to greet each other and you're going to say, hi, my name is so-and-so. And do not say that to your relative, say to other people, you know, I know you guys, so let's greet each other in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. each other and perhaps some of you are new and it's the first time that you have been in this church. We want you to know that it's not a coincidence that you are here or you're watching online. We strongly believe that every person that is in this space, God brought us here with a purpose. There is something that happens when we gather as Christians and God in his perfect power has allowed us to even grow in that gathering with our online community. But it is in here that something that the Holy Spirit does to our lives that brings transformation. I want to share with you a psalm that I was uh, listening during the week. Um, maybe I'm going to show to you my age big time in here, but there is a Christian group that I love that the name is Petra. And I'm sure that everyone in the 80s and up, probably you know what I'm talking about, but it's like this rock Petra, right? For you millennials under Check it and just pray for me. That's all what I'm asking you to do. But there is one song that is called, I Waited for the Lord. And I heard that song before, it's Psalm 40. And I heard it in a very nice singing and very sweet, and it was good. But when I heard it in Petra, I thought, that's the way I pray this psalm. So I want, to hear, I want you to hear what it says, Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. So you see, that's why you need that rock band. You need to say, I waited patiently. And I confess, my waiting patiently is not like this. My waited patiently is like, Jesus, I'm waiting, you know. But what is beautiful in here is how it says, He lift me out of the slimy pit. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. That is the prayer for us today. To stay in that firm rock, in a place where we can stand. So where are you feeling slippery today? Who's the person? 
person that you need to pray for because it's in a slippery spot? What are those things in your life that you're feeling right now? God, I'm not sure if I can really deal with this in my own. And I have something to let you know about that. You are right. You can do that in your own. That's why we have this firm rock where we can depend on. So my prayer for you is that perhaps you need to wait, but you will receive an answer. And I hope that the answer that you receive is not exactly what you think is the best for you, but that it is what God has known is the best for you because it's always the right place to be. So I'm going to invite you to where you are. And remember, the altars are open and at home. Let this be your space where you encounter that God who is our firm rock. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you and worship you. We say to you, Hosanna, you are our mighty God. And God, we are coming to you with a heart of gratitude. Because in many ways, we have seen, God, your faithfulness in our lives. And many of us, God, we can say that the words of Psalm 40 have been the prayer of our hearts. But we have seen your answer. We have seen how you have responded when we have been waiting. And then suddenly we can see you open the doors and you can show the light where we need to go. And we see ourselves in that firm rock. Or there has been times, God, that when we see, feel that the situation we are facing is so heavy. But God, you come and you strengthen us. And there are times, God, that we need to confront a no from you. But later on, we realize that was the best answer that you can give us in that place. So God, right now, we're waiting. We are waiting in you. And we pray, God, that in that waiting... May we all sense you as that firm rock guiding us in the process of life and the situations we live. And we pray all of this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So now I invite you to stand up and let's praise our mighty God, our firm rock.
Oh, is free indeed. Now my day. 
You may be seated. Hello. There we go. If you are a kiddo and want to join us up here for Children's Moment, you can come join me on the stage. Well, good morning. Good morning to you who are worshiping here with us in person, and good morning to you who are worshiping with us at home. We are blessed to be together this morning. So today is Palm Sunday. It is the start of Holy Week. And Palm Sunday is very special because it's the Sunday that we remember when Jesus rode into Jerusalem triumphantly as king. And they celebrated him by lining the streets and waving palm branches and saying, Hosanna. And I'm sure that was an amazing sight. If you haven't heard the story yet, you need to ask one of your Sunday school teachers to tell it to you. It's awesome. But there was one thing that I think may have looked a little funny with this whole scene as this king is coming in and being celebrated. And it's that Jesus wasn't riding on a horse like you would think a king would. He was riding on a donkey. Now, funny enough, I have a lot of random knowledge about donkeys. It's one of my topics that I just know about. But I think they are such cool animals because they're just kind of silly. Have you ever seen a donkey with their big ears? Oh my gosh, I think they are so, so cute. Now, donkeys have really silly personalities. I think that they're just really funny animals. Has anybody ever heard a donkey make a noise before? The bray? It sounds like, I know we say e is what it sounds like, but it's pretty crazy, the noise that they make. But donkeys have a really special job. When you find them on farms, sometimes they're there to pull carts, but they also have another really special job. When they go out into the field with livestock, whether that's chickens or sheep or goats, they actually are turned out in the fields with them to protect them. You see, donkeys are really, really brave and they're really, really strong and they have big protective instincts. And so they're gonna protect their herd at all costs. They're even known to chase down coyotes and to chase them away or even to like get rid of them totally. Now, not only that, but donkeys are really friendly and they make really good relationships with animals. And so sometimes they'll go out with bigger animals like horses because horses get scared really easily. And so some people will turn donkeys out with their horses to help their anxiety levels come down because they know they've got something brave and friendly there with them. And so knowing all of that about donkeys, I'm not surprised at all that Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem because friendly and brave and strong and loving sounds exactly like Jesus. That's who Jesus is to us. He is a friend to us who went to all costs to protect us so that we got to have life with him forever. So I wonder if you've ever driven around town or maybe you've driven out the hill country before and you've passed a field and you've seen a donkey. Has anybody seen them out and about in neighbor's fields maybe? Now, whenever you see them, Not only are you gonna think of Jesus because he rode in on one humbly on Palm Sunday, but you can also remember that donkeys are brave and friendly and there to protect just like Jesus is. So right now what I wanna do is I wanna pray and I wanna thank God that our Jesus is somebody who was there to protect us, will always be there to protect us and we can always call friend. Why don't you pray with me? Say, dear God, thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus to be our friend, to be our protector, and to always be with us. Remind us that you went to all cost so that we could have a friend in you forever. Help us to remember every time we see donkeys that we have a friend in Jesus who was brave and strong and went to the cross for us so we could be protected from our sin. Thank you for our love and thank you for Easter. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, if you are in second grade and younger, you can come with me back to the children's area. If not, you can go back with your parents. (laughs) 
Hi, my name is Jules, and today I'll be reading Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on, on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him um, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, people, to the point. In heaven, I'm going to read like that. Julia, thank you so much. You did a great job. And now we have an assignment for the children and those who distract easily. That includes some adults. So while I'm preaching, I'm going to invite you to do a donkey. And in the donkey, you're going to also write, you're going to draw Jesus. And you're going to tell me three things that you know about Jesus. Now, if you don't draw, you want to do it on Legos, that's fine. Donkeys are hard to do. After I heard what Catherine said about donkeys, I want one. <laughs> Actually, I need one. You know, Abel, I want one. I want one. All right. Because they sound super cool. So I love animals anyway. So let's just have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we have the opportunity to gather here in this Palm Sunday. Allow us to listen to your word. Allow your spirit to be the one who speaks to us and through all of us in such a way that when we step out of this place, we remember that we are in the hands of you as our mighty God. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. So during this time of uh, Holy Week and Lent, we have been talking about different events that have happened in the last week of Jesus. And we have been kind of having this map uh, that shows us where we are. But now I'm going to ask you to do something that it's called the Michael Jackson move. All right? So as you have known, I like... Michael Jackson. Going back to the people who do not know who's Michael Jackson, he was a very good singer and dancer. And also many of you know that in my funeral, I don't want a funeral. I want to become like a praise and worship celebration. And there is just one request that there is just one song from Michael Jackson. I know it's kind of odd, but I really like Michael Jackson. So Anyway, but there is one thing that happens with Michael Jackson, and that is that he does something called the moonwalk. You know what I'm talking about? All right. If you are online, I'm going to invite you to do the moonwalk. If you can do that, tape it and send it to me. And I'll be very thankful to watch it and even post it if it's something that is presentable. Then, for of you who are here uh, in, present, if any of you can do the moonwalk without injuring yourself, I would be very glad to see you doing that at the end of the service, and, um, and, and that would be great. But as you know what happens with the moonwalk, you're walking what? Backwards. That's the whole point of the moonwalk. I am not going to try to do it because it could possibility, it, it can happen that I don't finish the sermon because you're going to need to call 911. But, so that's what we're doing right now. We're going backwards a little bit. So we have been in all these sections, but right now we were in Bethany, Mount of Olives, Guard, uh, Garden of Gethsemane. We were already in Jerusalem, but today we're going one week earlier and we're going to this place. Guys, I check in five sources how to pronounce it. The five had a different pronunciation. So this is what we're going to do. This is the place called, if I translate that, it is the house of um, green figs. That's what it means, the house of green figs. The way I'm going to pronounce it is Beth Fage. And I could be wrong. All my pastors that are here, uh, do you agree, Pastor Bob? Thank you, Pastor Bob. I appreciate it. Because some people say like Beth Fage or something like that. But, but no, I think it's Beth Fage based on the Hebrew thing. Okay, so we are back on this place. 
And when we are listening here, is we hear the story of the Palm Sunday. It's a beautiful story. We have children participating with palms. We have had many services in my life in the church where the children get the palms. There is a reason sometimes when we think twice about the palms because as you can see now, we have this monitoring here and the palms becomes a weapon for many kids and they are like, Whoa! so they become like Star Wars or something in there. So that's why the palms are there today. But it's the Palm Sunday, we know the story, right? But there is so many deep things in that story that we can easily just dismiss. And there is some things that we need to answer in the middle of that. So the very last part that we read, it says this. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answer, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So there is a question that they ask there. What is that question? Who is this? Who is this? And you see, that is a question that right now we also have many times. Who is Jesus? And the way we answer that, you know, it shows to us the, the way we believe in him, the way we interact in him. There are so many times when we talk about Jesus in a way that it is very scary. Because we are thinking in a Jesus that is kind of almost my weatherman. You know, I'm going to ask Jesus how the weather is going to be and I hope the weather is going to be according to what I want in the moment. Sometimes we think in Jesus as the one who is like my good, uh, good luck charm, you know. Like whenever I have something wrong, I'm going to call on Jesus. But everything else is in my own. Or Jesus is the one who needs to help me. So my agenda is the one that we fulfill instead of relying on his plan. I mean, when we hear about this, there is actually part of doing this whole um, uh, exploration of this sermon. I came across a song that till this day, guys, I cannot take it from my head. And it traumatized me. It is called the plastic Jesus. Have you heard it? I'm glad you haven't. Don't hear it. It's from a movie, but then it's like a country song, like twang, 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 kind of thing. And it's, that's my version of country song, people. And it says, I, I don't, who's laughing really loud, somebody? I don't care if it rains or freezes as I long I got my plastic Jesus riding on the dashboard of my car. Through my trials and tribulations and my travels through the nation with my plastic Jesus, I'll go far. Ring, ting, ting. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. It's creepy, guys. Don't ever hear it because it doesn't leave your brain after that. But the problem for me was that, to be honest, many times that's how we treat Jesus. We treat him as just this plastic Jesus that I use according to my need. And when I'm feeling things are fine, I put him in the under my car and no problem. And when things are getting a little bit difficult, then I put him back wherever I need to remember that he's around. We have that. So sometimes we need to say, we need to ask the question of who is Jesus. And you know, it is okay to ask that question. But just a few days ago, I was with a very, very wise man of this church. And he said to me, it is really good that we have the opportunity to ask questions. But the other aspect is this. Do we, are, are we willing to listen to the answer? Are we intentionally looking for a place for that answer? So we are encouraging our new generations to ask questions. And I am 100% in favor of letting them be, be able to understand their faith. But as we teach them to ask the question, we need to show where to find the answer and let them listen to the whole answer. So we're asking that question, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus for you and for me? And in this Palm Sunday, by this event, it was a very visual answer of who is Jesus. And the first answer that we find is he was a radical promise keeper. It's the first answer, radical promise keeper. Matthew 21, 4 and 5 says, This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. 
So there is a promise that was happening. That there was this prophetic voice that was in the Old Testament through Zechariah. And what he was saying through that is that we were going to have the opportunity to see the Savior, and the way to recognize him was going to be through this kind of parade. Now, I want you just to think about this. We are in the Gospel of Matthew. Many times you can find in Matthew that Jesus is telling to people, I'm going to do this, but don't tell anyone. Remember that? It's kind of this messianic secret. That's what it's called. And we can preach about that in another time. But there is that constant Jesus doing something and saying, wait till the moment is the right moment to tell others. So all of that, the climax is in here. We find here Jesus being loud among the people, coming in a donkey with a coat. Look, just think about that image. I, mean, I just want you to see this picture of how there is this sense of cuteness with that, but at the same time, it's loud because it's unique. So you find Jesus in this donkey coming uh, with the people and the crowds just shouting as a way to make this noise, as a way to say, you know, now is the time to say, this is happening because Jesus is coming to fulfill a promise. And by fulfilling that promise, we are seeing that we have this God that is approachable in many ways. You see, Zechariah was a prophet that one guy called him the roller coaster prophet. There are so many things that he's talking, Zechariah, in the Old Testament. He's trying to guide the people of Israel to be intentional in following God. But at the very end of his book on Zechariah, actually a verse before that the one we read, uh, we find this. By the way, the word Zechariah means Yahweh remembers. God remembers. That's the, the meaning of the name. And it says, but I will encamp at my temple to guard it against marauding forces. Never again will an oppressor overrun my people, for now I keep in watch. So by having Jesus fulfill the promise, we are receiving that God that constantly is going to tell us that he is going to do something and he's going to fulfill that promise. Isn't that the best thing or one of the best qualities that you see in a person? That when you say, you promise something, you expect that promise to what? To be fulfilled. And we find in Jesus that God who does that. So through that, we find hope. You and I can find hope because we know if God said that, he's going to fulfill that. Then the second thing we understand in here is that strong foundation. He's that strong foundation. As you see, we read this scripture already, but there is this place where it says, see who's coming. Your king comes to you. Now, we probably are a little bit far of the understanding of who is a king. We don't have kings, except right now the rey fell in fiesta. And I'm not sure if that's a king that you kind of want to follow in many ways, right? But the concept of king and kingdom is a little bit far for us. The only other king we know is Queen Elizabeth. That I don't know how old is she right now, 127 or something like that. I mean, the, that lady is like go girl. So, but um, we, we, when we understand the concept of king, it's hard. But if you go to the original word of what does king means, kings means actually foundation. And for the Gospel of Matthew, it's very important that concept of king and kingdom. And when he's talking about, he's saying, we have God coming as a king to establish his kingdom. Now, the concept that people were expecting of that was very different. One of the things they were thinking is that, okay, now we're going to have the kingdom of God coming to us. Great. We're going to be free from this political oppression. We're going to be able to go back to power. But what we find in here is that Jesus is showing a very different kind of king and a very different kind of kingdom. The king that we find in Jesus is a humble king. As you can see here, we can dismiss quickly that says, see your king, what is he doing? Coming to you instead of you going to your king. He's coming to you. But through that, he's saying this foundation is coming to you. This God that is providing to you that rock foundation is coming to you. One of the things that Matthew talks about is about building your house on the rock. You remember that? In one of those uh, parables, and he says, if you build your house in the rock, it will be strong, and there can be many things that are coming against you. But if you are building that rock, it will be strong. 
Now, how do you do that? You do that by following God's will and his commands. It says, when you obey me, you're going to be able to build yourself there and you will be strong. So when we find Jesus as as that king, we find him as that foundation and that provides the opportunity to feel safe. The opportunity to know that when we are in his path, we're in a safe place. The next one is this. I love this word, even though it's hard for me to pronounce it. Resolute savior, right? Resolute savior. Now, we can dismiss this one very quickly when we're reading it. But look what it says. It says, when Jesus entered Jerusalem. You see, that action for us is just one other one of Palm Sunday. But when you are thinking about what did that mean, it was very important. Let's, for example, read better what Luke 9.51 says, because it gives you a little bit more light on that place. It says, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus, the word again, resolutely set out for Jerusalem. What it means is there is an intention to go there. There is a desire for Jesus to go there. It is not something that it just happened, that he was walking around and it just went by and oops, they caught him and therefore he died on the cross. There was an intentional move from his part to go there. And even though we remember that in the Gethsemane, he's saying, this is difficult. If it's possible, God, I would like to pass this. He still was there. So what I want you to see in this is we find in Jesus a God who's not scared of facing what's difficult for you and for me and for his kingdom. He goes to the dark place. He goes to the place in your life where you say, God, I can't go there by myself because it's heavy, because it's painful, because I'm scared, because I'm wounded in that spot. And where you want to go there, you find Jesus intentionally going there with you. And not just that, he goes there to heal it, to be able to say that broken place of your heart that broken place of your family, that hopeless spot on you, I'm carrying that in the cross. Because God has the courage, Jesus has the courage to go there and heal you there. So he intentionally will go to the places that are dark for you and for me. So you will never walk in that spot in a place that is empty or dry. So what does that mean for you and for me? That we are protected. We are protected by God. And then we find him in this too. He's this available God. He's this available God. You see, so many times I have read this part of the Bible and I never caught something until this week. You see, I'm a very slow learner in this. But look what it says. It says, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. You see, many times we have quoted this and we have talked about it. And there is just also something that I want to clarify. Many times we tell that this crowd was kind of a wishy-washy crowd. They are shouting right now, Hosanna, and in a week they are going to be shouting, crucify him. But if you go to the Bible, there is never any place where it tells you that it's the same crowd. Actually, there are two very different crowds. This is a crowd that is what we call the common people. They are, as you remember, in that city of Betfage, that is the, this is what we call in Spanish el pueblo. It's like just the common people that they are receiving Jesus as the king. They are praising Jesus as the king. The ones who are shouting, crucify him, are the high priest and the people of power because those are the ones who were close to Jerusalem, getting close to Pilate and trying to push their agenda. It's not the same crowd. Maybe there were some that were around, but it doesn't look to me as the same crowd. This one who didn't have the education or didn't have the really kind of direct contact with the other high priest were the ones who were getting it. They were understanding, you know, 
this Jesus that we have is very different. And the way they were able to discern that is because they were the ones who sat and learned from him. They listened to his beatitudes. They saw him doing the miracles. They realized that he was connected with them. So when they heard his coming back, they had an idea of who he was. Yes, this is the one who healed my friend. This is the one who was able to raise from dead Lazarus. We, we know who he is. We have seen his miracles. We have seen those who have been healed by him. This is the one we're going to worship. A very different crowd. But there is also something very special that's happening here. What are these people doing? What are they shouting? Hosanna, right? What are they doing by saying Hosanna? Praising God. But I want to ask this. What is the location where they are praising God? In the street? Outside? You know how powerful this is? Because if you remember in the times of Jesus... Where was the only place where you could pray, praise the Lord? Where was the only place where you could encounter God? The temple. Who was the only person who was capable to intercede for the people? The high priest. That in this one, the high priest was a triste arrastrado. Do not say that word in Spanish. Who was just trying to have his agenda to hurt Jesus. So you have... That the place where supposedly people could worship God with a person who supposedly was going to guide God were unavailable. But now we have Jesus by this action totally changing who could be the ones who could praise him and have him close. And who are them? You and me. People just like you and me. People who can say, you know, maybe I don't know a lot of theology. I went to seminary, and guess what? I realized how ignorant I am and spent a lot of money to learn that, right? We all go and say, you know, just some people can understand the fullness of who is Jesus. But I believe this. I believe like the guy who was blind, who said, I don't know a lot about Jesus, but what I know is that he healed me. And many of us, we can answer the same thing. Maybe I don't know a lot about Jesus, but what I know about him is that he has carried me in my darkest places. He's the one who was walking with me in places that I don't want to confront. He's the one who can bring hope to me. He's the one that when I feel there is no more I can do, I feel that he can raise me up and keep going. That's the Jesus I know. Is the one who confronts me when I'm wrong and I go like my new baby cats when I'm trying to carry them and put them away and then they are just fighting and fighting all over the place. I can do that, but he still loves me and he still moves me where I need to go. And I'm thankful. That's the Jesus that we know. So we find it here the most odd parade in a donkey, loud, a Jesus that is approachable, but people who supposedly couldn't say Hosanna, making the biggest fiesta in the world. Because of one thing. How does Matthew start? That when Jesus came, he was what? Emmanuel. What does it mean? God with us. So we can doubt that we are loved by him. So when somebody asks you, who is this? Who's this Jesus that you have? Well, the Jesus that I have is a radical promise keeper, a strong foundation, a resolute savior, an available God. That is your Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. God, we come with a confession first. We come with a confession that many times we have put you as a plastic Jesus, and we just use you whenever it's convenient. But today we remember that in that Palm Sunday, you broke every kind of stereotype that was about who was God and Jesus. You are that radical promise keeper. You are that strong foundation. You are that resolute savior and an available God. 
And today, God, we want to be sure that we become connected with you, with that reality. We're thankful that through that, you're bringing hope to our lives. You're allowing us to feel safe. We understand, God, that we are protected. And we also know through that that we are loved. And we're thankful, God, because it is through this reality that we can see that our lives have a different value. Thank you, God, because you walk with us even in those dark places that no one can walk, even us. But you guide us to there and bring us out of it in victory. And we pray all of this with gratitude in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare for this Holy Word Week and we remember who Jesus is and what Jesus has done, I would invite us to remember that, ground ourselves in that reality of who Christ is and the saving action of Christ for our lives on the cross. Let's stand together. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus knew. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. Sing that again. Now my debt is paid. Now my debt is paid. It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. All oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. our Lord through our offerings and tithes, but I also want to just point to you, we're going to pass the plate again, and in that process, I want you to meet those who are going to be passing the plate, and those are our youth of our church. Mm -hmm. uh, I see them often, but I know that some of you do not see them. We have probably one of the most amazing youth in this church, and I just want you to give you thanks for them, and they're going to be helping during this time, and if you would like to also give your tithes or offerings through our banco, that there is the phone, you can do that, but if you want to do it here in person, our youth is actually helping with that. And I'm thankful for them, guys. Thank you for stepping up on the plate on that one. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this offering and thank you for the opportunity that we have to say Hosanna to you and to remember everything we are and everything we have is coming from you. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Times are dark, we've lost our way, we need a hero to save the day, the strongest warrior in our land, to come and break the tyrant's hand, oh Zana, save us.
A strange plan He rides a donkey to save the land The strongest warrior the world has known Let's us nail him to his throne Love must conquer hate. Satan's power comes crashing down. Only through a blood stained crown. Oh, Santa, save us all. Be our hero. Here I call. Save your people. announcements that we would like to share with you. Remember that you can connect with us in the different media avenues that we have, and that will help you also some of the different activities that we have uh, going through the week on some celebrations. Another thing is I remind you that we have Easter coming, and some of you have seen we have these cards at the entrance. I encourage you to take one so you can remember the events that we have, but take a different one, another one, so that you can share that with another person. Remember, it works better if you add a cake or chocolate or something in that, but just a way to be able to invite other people to participate with us. But there is also one thing that I want to um, celebrate with you on Easter that we're going to have, is that our baby and prayer room, we're going to have our dedication finally. We have had that one for two years ready. But the situation we had is that from all the rooms of the church, that's the one that had the worst ventilation. However, we are so thankful that we have a lot of intelligent people in this church, and one of our members was able to actually create something that will provide that ventilation that is necessary for that room, and now we can use it for prayers and also for the babies while they are hearing worship. So I encourage you on Sunday to come because we're going to have the opportunity to dedicate that space so you have a prayer room, you have an opportunity during the week to come and have a time with the Lord, but also for all the babies that are able to come there and worship. Sylvia Carpenter has done an excellent job painting. If you have come to campus, you can see the Beatitudes paint that she had at the entrance is exactly that same tree that she did in both places. And we are thankful for all the gifts and talents that she has. But also, I want to let you know something. It is so easy that we want to jump from today to, to Easter. And it's tempting because we don't like the idea of suffering. It's part of the human nature. But it's necessary to go through that Holy Thursday and that Good Friday. So on Holy Thursday, we're gonna have an excellent service where Pastor Bob Allen is going to be preaching and that is already a great opportunity of learning. And he's gonna guide us through that day of Holy Thursday. And then through the Good Friday, we're gonna have a beautiful opportunity of remember that part of the story through music. But we added a new element on Good Friday. As you can see, we have what is called the Stations of the Cross. They will be open all day that day, but you can find a guided tour through the stations at 3 or at 6 p.m. So if you come at 6, you can have that opportunity of see the stations, and then you can come to service. But don't jump immediately to Easter. Remember, there was a need of a Thursday, a need of a Friday, 
to get to that Easter. So I think those are all the announcements. And also remember that on April 24, we are having the farewell to Catherine. We are thankful for all what he gave us and she taught through it in this time. But we also know that God has opened doors for her to be able to serve a new place and we want to have the opportunity to say thank you to her so i encourage you at that day to come from 9 45 to 11 and give her thanks for what she has taught to all of us amen so let's stand up and have this benediction now now may we all be people who shout osana may we all remember that in christ we have hope we are safe we are loved we are protected. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom. God bless you guys.